Well, hello everybody. Have how is everybody doing today? Are you having a wonderful Sunday? I hope you are. It is Sunday where we are today in Hong Kong and we are here for another Ask the Expert episode. So I want to ask you, what surprising life lessons do you think music can teach us? What insights can we gain from learning to sing? And what's the best way to cultivate an appreciation of music in young children? We're going to be talking about life lessons from music and more in this month's Ask the Expert episode. Now, for those who are, you, who are joining us for the first time, my name is Crystal Diaz. I'm a singer and voice coach at CSMA Studio and co-founder of the Online Vocal Academy. I help busy people who love to sing but haven't really had the chance to train formally. I help them release their voice, foster self-expression, and experience greater confidence, not just in their singing, but in all areas of their life. Now, every month I invite a special guest to share their stories, experiences, and wisdom with all of you. And my guests are usually people who have expertise related to vocal performing, self-expression, creativity, and, and confidence as well. Now, before I introduce my guests for this month, I wanna let you know that I've just released a free training called The First Three Steps to Free Your Voice. In this free three-part video training, I give you simple step-by-step -step guidance on how to free your voice so that you can start using it more expressively and confidently. Now, if you want access to this free training, go ahead and visit onlinevocalacademy.net forward slash three steps. I'm going to type this in the comments here so you can all see it. Here we go. onlinevocalacademy.net forward slash three steps, or you can click on the link in the description box where you're watching this video. All right, so this episode is very special. My guest is a legendary multi-award winning singer and is one of Hong Kong's most sought after celebrity vocal coaches. She mentors many of Asia's most popular singers like Joey Young, Young Zhou Yi, Jem, Fiona Sit, Si Hoi Kei, Susanna Kwan, Miriam Young, Vivian Chow, Alex Fong, to name just a few. She also happens to be my mentor and my mother. So please welcome Christine Samson. Yay! Hi everyone. <laughs> How are you this morning? Let's see. Let's see who's 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 here today. Hello, I see Angela. Hey, Angela. Nice to see you here. I see there's a Facebook user. If you want us to see your name, you can go ahead and click that link that you see right on the comment box there. Then you can uh, click and allow this platform to show your name so that we can see and then, you know, say hello to you personally. Uh, hey, Ben. I was hoping to see you here today. <laughs> hello, hello. If you're just joining us, go ahead and say hello in the chat box. And also, if you have a question for either me or Christine Sampson, we got two vocal coaches here this afternoon. You have us for a little while. Uh, so do ask us your questions. Uh, yeah. Good morning, Aurelian. Hello. Excited to hear your stories, he says. And of <laughs> course, Aurelian is also a member in our Inner Circle membership as well. And so is, uh, I see here, who else is here? Melody. Hello, Melody. Uh, Melody is from, from Canada. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> is that right, Melody? I believe that's correct. <laughs> hello, hello. All right, so first stuff here, we're going to jump straight in to this interview. Um, and I want to ask, I want to start from the beginning. We have a lot to cover. A lot of really exciting, interesting <laughs> stories to cover here. Hey, Hacken, I see you. Hello, Evelyn. Um, hello, hello. All right, so now you've been, I feel like as far as, um, you you've been you've been singing since you were little. Yeah, yeah so, I can remember. <laughs> so you've been singing, I know, since you were a child. But um, when can you tell everybody when you started singing professionally? Like, what was your first gig? First gig, I think I started singing professionally. I'm um, about when I was fifteen. Fifteen years old, and so yeah. when we you, you st so where were you singing? What was that like? Um, I think our first gig, I was with my brother, my sister, and the first gig was with, when my father took us to with his band 
And at that time, I think um, we were we were very very fresh, very new. I had my, my I had my bass. I only knew like about five songs, you know, <laughs> and um, and that made like usually I would sing when I was younger, but this time was a, like a a job. But to me, it was not a not a job. To me, it was like a lot of fun. Did you know that you were actually gonna? This was a job. Went going into that because I know Grandpa took you and yeah. it's like good get on stage start singing. Yeah. I mean, did you even know that? No, you, no. <laughs> have any concept we were that you were working? Totally. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like okay, you know, like that. So we went up and we didn't know that we we're gonna get some like sea packet, you know, from the the owners. Where you know? was this? I know this was in Hong Kong. Do you remember where your first gig it, was? It, it was around Central, I think. In Central. Yeah. In Hong Kong. Yeah. Pretty cool. Back then, I think Central was probably very different to how we, if you're watching from Hong Kong, you know where Central is. And I think the nightlife in Central nowadays is very different from the nightlife yeah. that it was back then. Yes. Right? 15 yeah. year old singing on stage is not, usually not it's... something that happens nowadays. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so that bass that you played, was it the same Hofner bass? It's the same Hofner bass as um, Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney's Hofner bass. So yeah. if you are following me on Instagram, I have a photo um, that was one of my recent photos on Instagram. And if you swipe through the pictures, there's a picture of me as of what, a yeah. year when I was a year old? No, no, no. I think you were like two. Two, two years and old. Yeah. And I'm holding the that exact Hofner bass. And then I'm, I'm like holding it. Obviously, no idea what, what it is. <laughs> That's the exact... Uh, we were having a rehearsal at that place, and ah. then we took you in the afternoon. So, and you were so interested. You went up on stage, and you were touching this and that. I don't so know I said, this. okay, let's take a picture then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know this stuff. All right, so what kind of music did you perform? I know a lot of people who are here uh, probably know what kind of music, but some might not. So might, I think some people will be very surprised to know what kind of music you all played back then. We were like a pop band. We would sing from soul. Earth, Wind, and Fire, all the way to Andy Williams. Or all English songs. English songs, mostly, and maybe some Japanese to mix with because we went all over Asia, and also Mandarin. Mandarin. So, did you always know that you wanted to be a professional singer? No, <laughs> everything actually happened so naturally. We were so young; it was not planned. Like the kids nowadays, you know, they are so. They know what to do. They know what they want. But in those days, it was just everything happened so naturally. But did, it's because grandma and grandpa actually sort of created that path for you, or they must have seen something in you to because you were the lead singer yeah. of the band. Mm -hmm. So they must have chose you to be the lead singer for a reason. So tell us a little bit. How did you become? to be the lead singer of the band? Was it, again, spontaneous? How did you discover your voice? Well, there were eight of us in the, in the family. I was number two. There's eight. Yeah, my, my mother has, has seven one mother, siblings. One father. <laughs> <laughs> seven siblings. My father, if, if you, you know my father, Romeo Diaz, he, he, there's nine on his family. So you can see how big our family is. <laughs> All right, so uh, how did you discover your voice? I, I actually didn't, but one one night, I, uh, it was morning. One one morning, I was just lying in bed and um, not waking up yet, and I started to sing and hum. And How sing. old were you? I think I was about eleven. Eleven years old, and you yeah. were just singing yeah, just, for fun. just very <laughs> randomly, very, yeah, randomly, and then I was just gonna get up. Didn't want to get up. I didn't think that we were going to school or something. It was on holiday, I think. It was so I was I started to sing something that I knew. I, I forgot what. Then um, my my sister Laura, you know, and I think my mom just passed by, and then they saw hey, how come your voice is it has vibrato and everything. So and I said, and I didn't say anything. Yeah, how come? You know, in my mind, <laughs> how come it's so funny? That was the first time I discovered my voice was so relaxed, and I'm I was able to sing. But then they they recognized it. In and from then on, my my father and my mother, they were like, um, oh, she needs to go for singing lessons. She needs to do this. She needs to do that. Piano lessons. So I was the one who had to go next door to auntie so-and-so for piano and uncle so-and-so for voice. Because <laughs> that, was, that was the life back then, right? You, would, you wouldn't go to a school uh, no. back then. You no. would go to somebody's house and yeah. you would 
somebody connected to the family and then you would go so there so there was such a thing as singing lessons or voice lessons back then or yeah, was it were. common yeah yeah I, it, they were they all, always was but uh, we were just like we never thought about that but we had so many uncles and aunties and relatives they're all singers good singers good musicians and they would like more than be happy to take me in because my dad said oh because they play together so they yeah. say oh uh, this girl's got some uh, potential, you know, maybe she comes to you and okay. So I remember going to, to them and they would teach me a few of the tricks. And I, at that time I was, I was observing, I was very shy, but I would, I, I guess I uh, absorbed a lot of things from them because when they were saying something, sometimes I don't understand, I didn't understand that. But then later on, everything came to me when I was, a professional singer. So. I remember yesterday we were having a conversation um, and you talked about how you would listen to a lot of different kinds of music. Yeah. Was that, would you say that made a big impact on you in terms of honing your skills? Definitely. Can you imagine at 15 or at 10 years old or even uh, five years old, I was listening to a lot of the, the, um, the oldies of the 50s, of the 60s. Was this on a, on, were this, was this on a gramophone? On the gramophone, <laughs> you know, it was a little yeah. bit broken down by eight of us, you know. And um, I would, we would, we knew a lot of songs just by listening all day, all day. Because um, my father loves instruments, loves music, passion, so such a big passion on music and instruments. So he, we had a lot of instruments in our home and guitar and accordion you name it we tried even the violin you know which one we like but usually what we all a few of us just every time we come home we go to the go to get a guitar or a piano and just play a little bit but never never actually jam together until about 14. Until you're older. Yeah. So instead of playing with video games or iPads yeah, or back TV. in the day or watch TV, yeah. <laughs> it would be instruments. Instruments. Would pick, pick it's like, listen. It was like, a, like a, a music store in our house. And, and so tell me about when you were listening to all these different music uh, from all over the world. Are they usually uh, English songs or usually all kinds? In, usually English songs. So how, what did you do? Did you mimic them? And how did you, did you just listen or? How did you hone your own skills by that? Did you use that as a way to shape your own style? It's all natural, right? So when when we listen to something and I just like, oh wow, this this is a very good singer, but I could not really analyze it. We just listen to it, and I would mimic them. Even guys, I would mimic, mimic in their keys. So and usually I was the only one always, you know, sit on the floor and listen to the gramophone and mimic every one of them. So, um, my father and my mother said, this one needs to go, this one needs to go and learn singing, you know. Well, I think that's the thing is that with, with music or with learning anything, really, um, you have to have that sense of curiosity, I think. Um, and, then, and then learning to become aware, I yeah. think, of, of certain yeah. things. And I think, yeah. I guess, from what I'm hearing is that when you were listening to different singers, you were learning without realizing it realizing. to even appreciate different stylistics and, yeah. and even mimicking different styles of singers yes. um, gave you that a, a, a way of practicing and developing your own style yeah. as well um, mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. appreciation of other people. Yes, I think uh, in all, mo I think in all children, they should be a, able to introduce with music, but don't you think so? Yeah, I mean, they, of course. It is, they, they will learn how to appreciate a lot of good taste and a lot of um, the melodies, they, they're all so different. So when they, you know, they, are, they are, when they are listening, even even the, the, the pregnant women, right? Oh, yeah. they, they, would, they would listen to <laughs> Tchaikovsky or stuff like that, right? So talking a little bit about that um, with it, introducing music to children from a young age. I mean, I feel that we, me and my brother growing up, we also had something very similar. We always had with, we always had instruments in the house, um, all, all kinds of instruments. And we obviously grew up listening to our family perform. We were always around music, different aunties and uncles, same thing. Um, they were also in music. 
Um, and would you say, though, that it is important to expose children to music? But in what way, though? Is it just enough to get them to listen to different kinds of music? Or is it important to put them in some kind of formal education, like some kind of training? What would you say? Um, I think for children to be able to just listen without realizing they are listening to something and just let them um, develop their own passion in you. and you have to as a parent you have to observe what they maybe some of them are not interested in they are only interested in nursery rhymes you know and later on they would not be interested in these kind of songs and all but you just have to keep on playing some songs that you like some a lot of my students too they say oh, I grew up listening to those songs so I never knew them but I could I, I'm familiar with them yeah so I think it it's still good that way because you know you never know what they like when you if you don't introduce it to them I think something you said just sort of popped into my head made me think of something was is this idea of music being associated with memories right I'm, I'm sure all of us here can can relate to that when we hear certain songs we, we have certain memories or emotions attached to that. Um, I, I'm sure you have students as well. I have students that have said this to me where um, they learn piano, but they have a negative association with piano. Yes, because so many of they them. Were so, the teachers were so strict, or yes. um, they were in choir and had a negative experience in choir because the choir director said something um, negative about their voice, right? Yes. So that association, I think, is so yeah. important. Yeah and to make sure that that association is positive would you say that that would be that is actually more important than more anything important. else for the for the children you for know young they, kids. yeah for the young young kids you know when they are introduced with music it has to be pleasant yeah and happy but if they really love it some some kids like they are, they really have a passion for all kinds of songs they could mimic and these are special talents right but for the rest they would just listen and listen, and then if you're very strict with them, they would like, you know, back, back out on. When, and they have, a, they will have a, how do you say, a shadow when yeah. they grow up. They say, oh, I never liked my singing teacher, you know. So they, I think that you have to let them, uh, grow naturally, you know. Yeah, yeah. rather than um, force them to do certain yeah. things. Because the last thing you would want is to have your child have a negative association with music, and then Absolutely. that will impact their interests later on in life. And So I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are um, about how music can um, affect you as a person. So going back to your story, wh what do you think is the, one of the biggest lessons? How, how has where your career, how has that shaped the person you are today? What are some of the key... Um, um, lessons that you've learned as a person who has been in music your whole life? First of all, I'm very, very grateful. As I grow older, I'm, I'm more grateful that I'm able to to have this music in my life, even as a profession. Because I never, until today, I feel that I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Because great. I'm doing something that, you know, it's just naturally come to me. And I didn't know at even age 15, 16, I didn't know I was going to be a teacher. I, was, I, never, I didn't know I was going to be a lead singer. I didn't know I was going to be a bass player. But everything just, you know, I guess my father and my, my mother, they, they knew. They just, my, my father bought, the, he chose the instrument for me. He said, okay, the band, all of you play guitar. You can't have all guitars in the band. So they would, he would assign my brother on the drums. He was good at drums. So you're not playing the guitar. He was good in guitar. So my sister Laura was in the guitar because all three of us played the guitar. And then because since you are the lead singer, so you just play the bass. <laughs> so he bought me my first bass and uh, he taught me my first song. What was it? What was it? Susie Snowflake. <laughs> Until today, I love that Susie song. Susie Snowflake. Susie Snowflake. It's only actually three chords of three or four chords. Okay. But it's, he he was so patient with me, and and I don't know. It seemed like a long time. It was like maybe three hours or two hours. Of, I, I I don't remember. But he taught me that first bass. He was so patient, and later on, I realized such a easy song for him. And but he was so patient and. 
and until now today. But Susie Snowflakes, not many people know this song. <laughs> Me, then, I think it's. I feel like it's a nursery rhyme. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it, that that's the song. Yeah. Um, what's that, what has been now? I know that going back to you performing with your your siblings, you actually toured around the world, yeah. um, and I know you went to Mexico. Yeah. Uh, where else did you go? Japan. Japan, Thailand, Thailand, uh, yeah, and also the um, Canada, all over, all over Mexico, Acapulco, Mazatlan, and, and then we went to Japan, Okinawa, Sapporo, Hokkaido, yeah, yeah, all those. So, what was the best part about this experience, and what was the toughest part? Toughest part in those days, the three were. It was tough because we were young, you know. We, we, you put us anywhere, we we'll sing. You put us anywhere, we can sleep and eat, you know. In those days, no. But you, know, if, looking back, I think the toughest was actually not in Asia. It was in Canada when we were on the road, pack up. You don't have the roadie with you, you know. You have to do everything yourself. But in Japan or in 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 Thailand or. We had the roadies with us. We had the assistants and the drivers because we had to go to one place and then we just set up. Only the guys, the <laughs> girls don't have to. So we set up and then we just have to just sing. But in, I think the toughest was that. It must have been tough too when we were younger in, the, in Asia, but we didn't feel it. Well, what was the best part about that experience of touring around the world with, your, with everybody? I, until today, I'm so grateful because it was with my family, right? And so we, we, we experienced ups and downs together. And then uh, we were always on the pedestal because every time when we were, when we were on stage, it's, now I look back, it's like we were little monkeys, you know? <laughs> and they say, okay, time, wind up, okay, go over there on the stage and you can sing. And, and then we come back down, you know, we're a different person. You know, a family, and then you know we, we you know we would go to watch TV, and we would yeah. Did you ever have any stage fright? You going onto different stages and performing in different uh, venues and different audiences? Was that challenging for you? Did you experience any kind of anxiety on being on stage? Uh, actually, not as much as some of my students told me, because I think it's because because I was with the band, I was with my family. And we really worked hard on all our songs. So behind closed doors, we did a lot of rehearsing. So we, were, we had each other. So when we were on stage, we can hardly wait to be on stage and play them. Because you're ready, We're right? ready, You're yeah. prepared. And so what was that like? What, did you, what kind of hours and what did that preparation look like? Okay, like for example, when we started really playing, in those days in Hong Kong, in the 60s, late 60s, we would... Every nightclub has two bands. They have the big band, the bigger band with the horns, and the smaller pop group. We were the smaller pop, pop group. We would sing like, you know, all kinds of pop music. And they would sing jazz or standards with other singers coming in every night. So the clubs were like, you, there are no dead moments. It's always like, we, we have one song that we rotate, we alternate. So when, when there's one song that we are, even today we all talk, with the bands, there's one song that we always sing, we always play, and then the bass player will change, and I'll play this note, and then this, you play that note. So and you're I talking down. about the change over from one yeah. band to another. Yeah. So there would be one Music song. Music never stops. <laughs> there's one song we do that. It's a one. You play so that the song. bass player oh, comes on it. and changes spots with Yeah, the, the bass player cool. is a, um, and now go. <laughs> and then I'll start. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. But what, what, what about practice time, though? I mean, what was that like? Did you rehearse a lot? I mean, how many hours would you say you rehearsed for every show? We worked like four to six. Basically, I remember four to six, it was a tea dance. Okay, so four to six, everybody danced. And then we were, we were playing, and then we, we get off, then we go home. We walk home every, everywhere it's near. So we walk home and then we would uh, have dinner and relax and we go back 9.30 and play until 1, 1, 1 1.30. And then uh, that was what it's like. So where, how can we find time for rehearsal? Usually after 1.30. 1.30 in the morning? Yeah. In the morning? It was nothing to us. <laughs> 
<laughs> because you know, it's like we finish at three, three thirty, go home and sleep the next day. We That's just interesting. Go for four. So you actually put you you would perform. You would actually be on stage. You would perform, and then at the end of your work day, instead of going to I don't know, relax or whatever, it's back to work. Let's rehearse. Let's look at what went well. Let's go over the song, change a different key or something. Yes. So then that that would be your routine. And at then least go two or three times a week, at least. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And then sometimes I would have a song in front of me, and then my brother say, "Oh, you're singing this song now." I say, "Okay." Then I have to learn my 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 part on the bass and learn my lead on on the song. That night, until three thirty in the morning. Then when I get up the next day. I couldn't remember the song because you know, like it's too new. So I have to remember, remember and that night. That the next evening we started singing with no paper, huh? no lyrics in front of you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, no lyrics. We never play with lyrics in front of us. It was um, towards later when I saw everybody is using lyrics <laughs> or even uses, headphones. Everybody we, does that nowadays. We're not used to that. Yeah, we're not used to that. But I guess it's natural. But did now. you do it? Like you were able to. Oh yeah, line. yeah, no problem. But, but I think that that's, is that because you knew you had to be on stage? Do you think that that's because, because when push comes to shove, when we know we have to do something, by hook or by crook, somehow we make it happen. I mean, usually is that it, it, no, In those days, it was like, we were trained like, every day is like, we just have to go by every day, but the highlight and the most priority for us is going up on stage and rehearsal, putting on makeup. That was, that was like we were like all wind up. That's like you mean that's when you come alive. Yeah, we all come alive. <laughs> and then when we finish, then we just go home and you know and we and it become and normal. We would not go like oh let's go and have a drink or never did that. Very yeah. disciplined back then. Yeah, we Would went you say home. it was disciplined or it was just the way that it was? It was the way that it was. And we were in our characters too, you know, we would not go. The the guys would go. The guys would go out, you know, they would relax, they would go to another another um, nightclub to visit the musicians that we don't. The musicians come and visit us most of the time. Yeah, I think it's really interesting as you're talking about this and I'm thinking, you know, so many times that we are in a situation, just even outside of music, where we have to do something and we think about that thing that we have to do when we get nervous but from what it sounds like you almost didn't have time to think about that stuff no time you had no time to worry about yeah. whether or not you're going to do a good performance all you know is i got to perform yeah so i'm going to do the steps and take action yeah to make that happen yes and i think that that can be so relatable to in so many different ways as well just in general yeah. in terms of how we conduct ourselves i think we worry about we over we i think we're generally a culture of over worriers yeah. and we get concerned about things but really you got to take action have the right people around you yes right and then yeah. the right guidance and then the right preparation now i have said that but for some people who, who didn't have that or don't have this kind of um, environment or people around you what you need to do yourself, if you want to do something good, it even doesn't have to be singing. You gotta turn on that. You have first. You have to, have, of course, you have to have passion. Then you have to turn on if you want singing. You have to turn that singing, singing mode on. You have to think about it every day, and then when you sleep. You think about it. And you think about it, and then you 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 just like take care of your voice, and then you want to sing. You know, and you want to. I want to go into um, another level of my singing. You have you got to have that to be able to sing better and improve, and it's a lifetime process. But it's amazing results. I, I I love that image of you that 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 switch. I'm on. I'm making this happen. This is happening. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I know. Yeah, well, that's why I, when I'm thinking about it, it's like well, we were like little monkeys. You know, you wind up. We were up there and we were just dancing and singing, and and then we come down. We say, oh, okay. <laughs> Soft spoken, you know. Now we can relax. Well, okay, I, I know that um, you were telling me this story yesterday, and I really wanted to share it with everybody. Uh, you, there's a lot of stories of your, from your past, obviously, as Too a much. professional singer. So many. Can you share one memorable story? And the one I'm thinking of in particular is the one in Japan. <laughs> can you tell everybody that story? That, okay. With the, with the army? With the army? With the U.S. Army barrack in the barracks. Okay, yeah. What was that like? Oh, wow. That was like the most nerve wrecking why because um when they sent us to japan there were other different 
bands from from Singapore, from Korea, from Philippines. So I want to give everybody some context here. So back, this was 1967, 68. 68. Um, and so they were they were one of the bands that were sent to Japan to entertain the U.S. Army. Yes. Is it just Army or no? The Marines. No, Marines. And right uh, at the officers. at the barracks. There are the officers. Yeah. Um, to entertain them. We've well, we've seen this in movies. <laughs> we've seen we've seen this. So this you actually were one of these performers yeah. at these uh, at this yeah. event. And why was it nerve wracking? Because the, our agent was telling us, he said, because we were not there as a band like we did in Hong Kong, like second second pop band. We were there as a floor show. You know, in those days we call floor show is like a show. Nobody dances. Just look at you, and you the 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 stage will rise and you're up in the spotlight on there's a lot of people and and so we that's the difference so we had to have show clothes really we really, you know shiny clothes and and but our agent told us that this is your first show in in Japan in this um, with the soldiers for the soldiers because we also sang for the the local Japanese but this is different now, if one of if you are not good, the rest of the clubs will not hire you. So the rest of the army clubs or the yeah. I don't know what they're the called. The military bases, yeah, right. yeah. Different bases won't oh, hire Marines. you. So this is the thing. You're yeah. going there, you get sent there. And and the agent says, You better knock it out of the park. If you do not do well, you will not get booked anywhere else. <laughs> Yeah. Right? yeah, I mean, this is like that. That's the kind of pressure that you would. Yeah, you have to turn yourself on for. Yeah, <laughs> and we knew there were like four, five to six bands there. Okay, so that's also interesting too. When you're almost not competing, but in a way you are because yeah. there's that comparison. Yeah, competing is the best. Actually, it is. It is the best. It yeah. is. It really yeah. makes you turned on. So yeah. what? 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 Um, what was the so first what song? happened? Okay, what so happened? We were, yeah. we were rehearsing, rehearsing, and then we know we were already pretty good at that time okay <laughs> <laughs> but we had we were precious so we were you know we were, I was like you know we were teenage, teenagers and then so okay we practice practice and then you know my mother my father my mother was the manager my father was the uh, musical director for us so they were like let's do it let's do it and when the when we went on the first first night it was a lot of people we looked at outside oh my goodness so all many people. the military all out all them all the soldiers were all you know soldiers. like yeah officers they were like ready for shows because you know they they go to war right they they come back for for rest and uh, recuperation but you exactly. also said that there's a lot of people who were injured yes yeah oh, there was a different one we actually went to the hospital too. Oh, and then they were in wheelchairs. Oh, yeah. Okay. They all, like they fought in Vietnam and all that. And then they so we 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 looked at who we, we were very nervous. And so we went, okay now this is it. the stage is very small. Okay, very small. But the place is big. The stage is very why is it so small? It's a big one. No, we are going to the front of the small stage that that can rise. So all five of us, including the drummer, it's in this small stage, okay, stay still, okay? Once we start playing the first note, the stage will rise, okay? <laughs> so because all these people become in, we're so used to going uh, going in and spot it on. We're not used to coming and see them all around us. Oh, you come onto the stage, and yeah. then, and then uh, they're the all stage watching is by. Yeah. The floor show stage is in the right. front, and they're all around this standing, sitting, mm -hmm. you know, with drinks, and so we were like, it's very small, so be careful. Don't 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 fall. <laughs> so that was like, and we had to be good too, you know. So, and then we would just say, okay, one, we say, okay, ready. And then the spotlight on the first note comes on, spotlight on, and then it raised, and then we just, we were like this, right? So we start singing. We didn't care. We just start singing. And you know, we wind wind it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So wind up dolls. <laughs> yeah. And then we were singing, singing, and then for about forty five minutes, we were tore the house down they were they loved us so much <laughs> that we were booked so full three shows a night one in over here uh, an hour's drive one's two hours drive one is like there's so many barracks this all so, over japan all over so wow. we were like we had to change in our van <laughs> all of a sudden in the agency when they say today which band who wants to be with which man and the the, the the roadies would say all want to go with us because we were like <laughs> what's happening you know <laughs> 
And then so, uh, and then at the end of the show, usually, those those soldiers, they were they were waiting for in, in, in our dressing room outside, waiting to take picture, waiting for, for signing. Wow. We're not used to it. And then those roadies were happy. You know, so like, okay, 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 be careful, be careful. You know, so it was like. Wouldn't it, it be like amazing if this, uh, if this um, interview, somebody is watching this interview and actually has a photo? <laughs> I know, I know. Let's put that out to see them. <laughs> in the universe there. You know, if you if you know your grandfather, or maybe that was there at the time, you know, ask him, if what were you, you guys were the top notes, right? We were the top notes, yeah. The top notes. Yeah, so if you did. have a relative or somebody who was in Japan in the 1967, 68, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, ask them if they know of a band, the Top Notes. Yeah. That would be so cool to yeah. see if um, yeah. you know some some memorabilia exists from that. It's just so overwhelming there, you know. And then uh, all of a sudden we pack up and go. And then sometimes when I see the movies, you know, it's just we were there, we've been there, you know, been there, done that. <laughs> so I guess with music as well, it's not only taking you around the world, but it's it's enabled you to connect with people you would never have thought to connect with yes do you think that that's still a case now um, in terms of when you are performing or you're singing do you still feel that music is something that connects us connects people that maybe we wouldn't have ever met before oh now the, you know because of the media you can you can actually connect people even more more so more so now oh, definitely and and music I cannot imagine anyone who doesn't who says he doesn't like music? I would feel sorry for that person. Because, why? Because they, they, they I feel are, sorry they for them. <laughs> <laughs> because they depart of something so fantastic. It gives you so much joy, you know, and uh, and also appreciate a lot of good taste and emotions and and understand yourself better. I want to know now. Uh, moving on to you becoming a voice coach, I think that. Um, we talked about this yesterday too, in terms of the identity of you as a Christine Sampson, the performer, yeah, versus Christine Sampson, the voice coach. How was that different for you? I know there's probably many uh, some students who be watching this, um, and their relationship to you is very different compared to maybe somebody who's a fan of yours. Yeah. You know their impression. So, yeah. can you share what is that difference in that I tell identity? You, my experience is like. I, I, you have three hours <laughs> because my no, a few more minutes. <laughs> I feel you know like like in different stages when I started teaching, in different stages, I find more um, how do you say um, more satisfaction and more experience to know to and appreciate uh, because. When the when my students some some of them were our fans, so right. they would come in. They were like shaking their boots and you know they were like, <laughs> like this. And, and of course, Do Dr. Aaron is here. By the way, hey, sits here. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Hi, Dr. Dr. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then so some of them would like they they they're young and then they are they really passionate. So for me, I for me I would. The first thing to be a good coach is if you are, if I, I was if I'm a singer, and I'm also an artist, I have to lose that identity and just totally focus on the the student. Otherwise, I will have a barrier like I'm an artist too. Yeah. You know, I have this attitude that you're my fan. You know, it's no, it's not good. So when you when you're teaching, you have to lose that, and and we say kuchuhu, and just focus on on your student and then what their needs are and make sure that they you have this um, understanding about them so as a voice vocal coach and as coaching you'd ha you have to really shed that identity of you as an artist as somebody who's yes. very admired yeah. uh, for as a singer was that a struggle for you um, it start it didn't start like overnight it started maybe towards like first year then it then I realized that you know by and by it's not like I'm I'm no longer an artist I, I still am but I can identify it so easily right. when I'm on stage I'm a different person how so how are you how are you different on stage I totally focus on myself <laughs> <laughs> and your audience <laughs> and of course the audience but you know when the song 
that right. you're, you're presenting. You know, it's 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 very different. Like, like that now you're focusing on what you're saying, what you're singing. You know, he feeling and with appreciation with so many people coming to see me. You know, like yeah, I think that that's really interesting. That you know where you put your focus on is. You have priorities, right? In, in different, I think we all have that. We all have different identities, and it doesn't mean we lose a part of ourselves. You know, yeah. if you're if you're a coach, you're not not a singer. No, right? You're no. still a singer. Yeah. You're, it's not like you are not that person anymore. Yeah. It's still in you. But I think we all have these different uh, ways of exploring our identity um, and having multiple different kinds of uh, you know parts to our identity. But we can we can activate those parts. By where we put our attention, yes. by where we put our focus. So as a coach, so your focus is on the student. As yeah. a teacher, your focus is on the student. It's not about you. No. It's not about like let me show you how good I am yeah. <laughs> as a no. coach, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's focusing entirely on the student. That's how we train our students, exactly. our, our teachers too. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, and then when you are on stage singing, it's 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 you expressing that com and communicating, connecting with that audience yeah. member yeah. Um, through music, and yeah. that's where you put your your, your yeah. focus and, also, and your attention. And also, also we have to be careful that when you're on stage, you don't carry that another. Another thought is, I'm a coach. Hmm. I better be good. That's interesting. That's also not good. That is so interesting. That is so true. Yeah, because you know, yeah. over, you will overdo. You you do you do you because you have that you end up having that little bit of pressure. Yeah. And then so your attention your focus is on the wrong thing. Yeah, on the wrong thing. Then yeah. you're not in the moment. You're not in that. No. That's and not what people come to see. And right? the, the result <laughs> is you overdo. Hmm. See, when you overdo, then you're not relaxing. Then you're pushing. Mm -hmm. See how we try to tell our students not to push, yeah, so hard exactly as 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 a habit, but somehow with this in mind, then you think it's very natural for a human, and then you all of a sudden you're just using a push that is you normally when you sing you don't do that, hmm. so that's how you think. I think that's that's so valuable and it's such so insightful because um, we can apply that to so many different areas of our life in terms of you know who do I want to be today that rather than uh, who would I, who shall I be it's where am I going to put my focus yeah. where am I going to put my attention today because yeah. that's going to determine the, yeah. the person that you're going to become yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I love that so um, I want to skip ahead a little bit we have so many questions but I feel like we went uh, <laughs> <laughs> different topics here which I really liked and hey if anybody has any questions because we're gonna be wrapping up very soon but if you have questions for me or Christine prefer have questions for Christine because this is this is her time here <laughs> we have her only for a few more minutes um, then do go ahead and post in the, in the Hi, comment Solera. box here <laughs> Solera's here hey Solera um, all right so uh, I want to make sure we get to several questions you can go ahead and post comments if you want to hey there Amy hi nice to see you hi Amy um, oh Amanda's here Amanda hey oh, Amanda. we miss you Amanda Aww. Amanda is an amazing voice coach she yes. is a vocal yoga coach check her out uh, vocal yoga miss amazing. you Amanda <laughs> mm -hmm. all right so why as a vocal coach Let's talk about you as a vocal coach for a little bit. Mm. You have mentored many professional singers, and mm. what would you say, coming back to present day, what would you say is the biggest struggle that artists face today in today's society, and how do you think that they should overcome it? So what's the biggest struggle that you see artists facing? I think sometimes being, you know, feeling of being an artist today, because they, they're so different from before they had today they have manager they have you know the, the PA they have the, the stylist and everything then you're on a pedestal before you know it you, what are you good at you don't even you, you even forget what you're good at are yeah. you a singer are you an actress or you forget which one is you're, you're doing the best now when this is like there's always a time when it's highlight then it was come down that's when they worry it's, am I gonna go up again you know, am I a single and am I an actress? So these are the stuffs that they they would they would be confused. Do you think there's there there's a lot more feeling of feeling lost as an artist nowadays? Definitely, definitely. And then sometimes they feel lonely, even though they are not lonely. You know, they feel lonely, and the struggle is like 
I would say because you know, they're not focusing on just just singing. They're focusing because this big business, right? Money making, ad advertising, that's not singing. Act acting, that's not singing, but they're making a lot of money. But then after when this all died down a little bit, I'm not saying totally died down, they would get lost. And if they have something wrong with, with the uh, management, then they in between where are they going, they would get lost. Because yeah. the people around not putting you up on a pedestal. Now, how do I do it on my own now? In those days, we were all on our own. The, the, no managers, no, no, manager. no branding, stylists, the, PR. Uh, the singers were all good, okay? <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you're not a singer, right? right? So the singers were all good. They, have, they knew all their keys. They knew all their songs, their lyrics. We didn't have an iPad or anything like that. They had this songbook so big. They're running around in Tim Sa Joy everywhere in every club and they would so easily tell any band leader to sing with any bands any band they don't have to have a rehearsal they used to say give you a key and a uh, b flat just go like this and then they all know oh there's like a hand symbol for yeah, like b symbol. flat and then because there's no time even to talk <laughs> so they would they would just sing and then they were just like so independent they are they were all good but now they know they don't even know their key sometimes right you know so and uh I think the struggle is that would you say, all over the world. I but I think that what? How do we balance that though? I mean, how do we? How, what's the solution here? Is because from what you're saying, it sounds like you do need to be clear about what it is that you're passionate about. But there's also that element nowadays where audiences do expect the you know their brands will want you to be an actress. They want you to do this, and they might want you to do this. So there's. I mean, this can happen even outside of the music industry. There are so many different things where maybe you would do because of making money. Yeah. But would you say the most important thing is to know what what is that one thing? Make sure that you know who you are as an artist. How how would you manage that? I would say if you're good, if you think you're good as a singer and you have some hits, focus on that. Okay, focus on that no matter what. You have jobs for actors, for, for acting, go ahead. But focus on what you're good at. Focus on your strengths. On the your ones strengths, that you're, yeah. What you're passionate about, what yeah. you're strong in, what you know you can um, make, an, make a difference. Yeah, something because that you, know. you are your own brand. Right? No one is your brand. You cannot copy anyone else. Because no one is you. So you can, people will, the, 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 the audience or the, even the um, directors or record companies still recognize this style is very unique and that's your own unique self right so everybody has their own style yeah so focus on that so one in um, some of the business mentoring programs that I'm in um, one of the things that one of the phrases that keeps coming up is stay in your own lane stay in your own lane yeah. it doesn't mean you can't make departures it doesn't mean you can't explore other things yeah. but know where your lane is Stay yes. on that lane. Stay focused on that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when all the other things, you know, f those jobs don't appear anymore, you know where you are. You know yeah. where your lane exactly. is. And you're continuing to build exactly. your strength exactly. in what you're passionate about. So never yeah. let that go. Right? Some, some singers think, oh, um, she's very popular now. Maybe I should be like her. Yeah. So I will try to sing a little bit stronger. But this is not your strength. Your strength is sweet and really, really soothing isn't that so interesting i mean we do that all the time right we do that we say oh that that life looks really interesting that job is looks really good maybe i should that person looks really successful i yeah. should be like that yeah and then we try to gravitate towards that and then we forget wait that person's life is that person's different from you, you what you offer is unique yes but sometimes you know they take a long time to understand that yeah. and, then, and then time pass already Stay in your own lane. <laughs> All right, so uh, finally, if I have one final question for him to say hello here. Hey there. Oh, there's some questions here. Hello. Hey. Hi, Christine and Crystal. I'm curious as oh. to how both of you, your teaching styles differ. Uh, and what is, what is it like <coughs> teaching popular singers? Okay, there's two questions. Let's answer the first question. How both of your teaching styles differ? So if you've watched this, if you know us and you've watched this uh, a video with this interview. This is all live, by the way. Um, you are, our, I feel like our personalities are very different. Very different. <laughs> but
But uh, everything I know, I learned from my mother. Um, everything, all the skills. So I, I started shadowing her when I was um, when I started thinking. Actually, she was the one that suggested that I should become a vo voice coach, and I was very, very resistant at in the beginning. And she just just try it, shadow me. You know, so I sat in on many of her lessons, and I saw how she was working with her her students, and I saw the transformation. And I saw how students um, come in in one, you know, they come in sounding a certain way, and then they leave sounding a completely different. Per it's like a completely different person, um, and I knew that I wanted to do that. Um, but I think what makes us different is that our experiences are different. Yeah. Uh, yes, and also don't forget, we are we are, we have the same directions which is in different ways of telling the student because we both know how to understand our student and communicate with them. That's very important. And then so what at the end of the day, we're all in the same, we, we, we end up in the same target, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the difference. The end yeah. goal is the same always for the student, but the way in yeah. which we get there might be different yeah. because we're different We're different yeah. people. I don't yeah. speak or <laughs> use the same words that mm -hmm. my mother would use and mm -hmm. in the other way around. And my, I don't have the experience of touring around the world um, yeah. in that way. And yeah. I my, my journey, every single person's journey is different. and so. What I my journey is different from your journey. But for you, is you're more expressive, and you'll be able to, uh, um, how do you say, explain to your your students in many, 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 many different ways. It's, it's my analytical mind. <laughs> 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 I tend to be a little bit more anal uh, analytical, a little bit more process and 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 logical in my steps. <laughs> So that's, that's, that's kind of the difference here. That's, yeah. that's why many of our students actually go to both of us, in case uh, if people were wondering. There are many students that will have a lesson with me and then a lesson with her. And then they'll find that our end goal is always the same, but the way in which we explain it and how we bring you there might be different. And that gives you a nice, well-rounded experience. And also here. sometimes we, we, we talk about it with we each do. other. And we say, like, <laughs> she, she find it? She's so amazing today. Yeah, and yeah, we do. And then she said, yeah, no, I noticed that, you know, like stuff like that. We, we share notes and things. <laughs> um, and the second question is, what is it like teaching popular singers? Yeah, so we both teach um, many pop singers in Hong Kong. What is it like uh, for you? I'm going to let you answer that. Teaching popular singers? Okay, what, what is, is it like? like? Okay, uh, first of all, you, you do the same thing. You make sure that, you know, you find their faults and then you try to th and let them know their faults and we try, try to work on them, you know. And it's like, a, it's actually, if they understand it, it's a lifetime process that they have to, I can just tell you in an hour and you see it, wow, I see it, but I don't practice. So this, this all come in hand, hand in hand. Some of them, the popular ones, they know that very well because if they don't have that pressure, they wouldn't come to me. So I would say the difference is we have a very focused purpose. So some of them will come, I have a recording in two weeks. I don't know the song yet. So uh, my purpose is to find the key because the key is very important for anyone, for an individual. That doesn't mean that you're female, you can sing the original key of the female. No, it doesn't mean that. So I think for, for, for professional singers and popular singers, you're focusing on what is their next project. I think that's the key. It's that whether we are working with a non-professional singer, beginner, complete beginner, or somebody who is well known and has been singing for decades, um, our process, the way we teach is the same, it, but the goal is different. Again, it's all about how, where you put your focus. The goal is going to be different for an artist that comes to us because they have a recording in two days. That's a very different goal, and that's a very that lesson will look very different compared to somebody who's a complete beginner who just wants to start singing to be yeah. more confident in their yeah. in their vocals. Yes, Let's and it's also when you know, they have to uh, uh, like a uh, like ten shows in the Coliseum, and I will go there to uh, warm their voice up before the show. But that's a different. It's not a lesson. Is warming up. That's a totally different because they already know what they they're singing. They already know. It's just to get them them in good top condition. That's a, that that is our job to do that. And also when they when when they are the main thing is they they need that confidence. You know. 100%. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that question. And hey there, Winsome. And hello, Cynthia. I see you here too. All right. So thank you so much uh, for being here uh, and sharing your wisdom. I hope that everybody 
enjoyed this session. Again, if you want access to my free three-part video training, if you want to kickstart and learn how to sing and or use your voice and start going down that process, I have a free training for you. It's three video lessons. 100% free. It's called the first three steps to free your voice and I'm giving you step-by-step -step guidance on how to start freeing, freeing your voice so that you can start being more expressive and using your voice more confidently. So again, if you want to uh, check that out, go ahead and head over to onlinevocalacademy.net forward slash three steps and put that up here or you can click the link in the description box inner circle members if you are watching right now remember we still have about a 15 minute a uh, private session with christine so go ahead and head over to the zoom link for our private session with christine christine you can find that uh posted in our inner circle community on mighty networks so i hope to see you all there thank you all so much again uh for watching and and, and being here we'll see you again soon bye for now <laughs>